While looking at sector analysis for insurance, 1.2% was lost and for consumer goods, 0.1% lost, uh, while the industrial goods and oil and gas indices closed flat. The banking gained 0.9% uh, and it was the sole gainer of the day. Well, that's uh, the report from yesterday market activities and joining us to make sense of this is Steve Okafo, the MD CEO, Kofana Securities Investment. He joins us via the telephone. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Okafo. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Professor. I hope the network will be good this time. It thank will. You. It should be. Yes. Okay. Well, let's look at the market now. Opening the week in a bearish territory. What do you have to say about this? Yeah. If you if you consider um, as um, the situation is, consider the fact that. Um, the PFA is that are the predominant players in the market. Okay, um, I think there's a general reaction to the increase in NPR. You know, um, we are looking at uh, more of fixed income security rather than rather than equity. You understand? So, um, and um, because of um, the situation in the FX market. The uncertainty and the non non availability of the FX. Foreign investors as it stands are still staying away. Okay, so generally you you expect more of the bearish trend. But there are some select stocks that you will see uh um, you know, activity on. Okay, but generally in the market you will definitely see the bearish trend because um, the TFEs are more like Selling down and then moving their are more like you know adjusting their portfolio in favor of uh, fixed income securities. Well, well, a lot of persons have said so much about fixed income securities. What, what exactly is the advantage that fixed income securities have over equities? Because I want to believe that you, you do not discard equities in total. If you do your fundamental yeah. or technical analysis, there are some stocks that you know we should see uh, people panning to. Talk to us about this. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. For example, um. Uh, GT Bank was um, crawling at 16.95 for a long time, you understand? So, and uh, we, we, we know quite well that that is a bank that has the um, potential to pay at least 250 common dividend at the end of the year. So, if, even if NPR is, um, uh, even if uh, you, are, you are looking at increased income security, for example, federal government savings bond for three years that will pay you over 13%, when you look at um, two naira fifty kobo on um, possibly seventeen naira at the last week, it was it was a better deal to buy Titi Bank, and that is why it's not out of place to see Titi Bank move from that sixteen point nine five to currently eighteen point seven, and it's still showing signs of improving. You understand? We are not discarding we are not discarding equities in, in general, but you see why we are. Why we look at what uh, the PFAs are doing is that uh, you see they are putting the year end, um, they don't want to take a uh, major risk because at the end of the year they are likely going to come out with their results, their reports, which they will not want a situation where investors will see them doing badly. You understand? But equities generally you can't, you can't um, discount the importance of equities because you know, <laughs> So I see UPDC, and UPDC at least one of the stocks put on the floor 
very, very well in the, in the coming months, you understand? Okay. Um, well, we see some results. Let me find you also a place to talk about. Let's talk about what you're happy about. You understand? Because dividend yield, you can't discount. Uh, you cannot, when you talk about a stock that will give you a good dividend yield over time, the mid bank has always been there and everything been consistent. Well, uh, looking at uh, some of the results that have been trickling in uh, since the weekend, I think since Friday, we've seen some results coming in. Has there been any impact so far on the market? No. No. In fact, in fact you, uh, you, can see, you can see stuff like PZ. PZ came out of the report, and the only idea is the shifted position of registered in 2023. They are paying uh, one naira, one naira, 1.01 cobalt. That's one naira and uh, 0.01 uh, cobalt. And their price, the, the stock price is 9.7. If, if you actually look at dividend yields on such a stock, that is over 10 percent. Like it is not moving, it's not moving prices at all. Investors are just, you know, are, you know, adopting a very cautious approach to it because they know, they know that, you know, with the situation in the FX market, it is very important. The situation in the FX market, you see where you are not sure whether Nigeria is going to appreciate. So I think I think more people are looking at uh, holding not just fixed, fixed income securities, but also diverting into possibly holding FX. This is where we talk about the fact that that market, that FX market, if CPN has to do something about it, you understand? People are speculating with it, holding on to FX when they don't have any need for it. Okay. Well, very quickly, uh, let's look at Airtel losing 10% yesterday. What was responsible yeah. for that sentiment? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget that um, uh, sometime last year, even Ethel was left, Ethel, you know the time of Ethel. In fact, I remember in the peak, in the peak of COVID-19, even that peak, we started the COVID-19 in 2020, Ethel was, Ethel was as low as 500 naira. You understand? So, jumping from the current price, the, from that price to, in fact, at the point, it, 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 it went above 2,000 naira per unit. You know, you expect, you expect profit taking. You understand? And um, don't also forget that Airtel is competing in the market with other stocks. When when investors look at dividend yield on, on the particular stock and it's not competing favorably with other stocks, there is a tendency. There is a tendency to sell that stock and uh, realign your portfolio, readjust and then move move closer to the ones that will give you dividend yield that will be, that will compete with the money market. All right. Well, the inflation figure, of course, uh, was released yesterday where we have inflation hitting a 17-year high of 20.77%. Uh, with that yeah. in mind, what should we be expecting uh, from the market? That is what we are talking about. You see, you see, right now, you, 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 you don't, there is no investment. There is no investment in Nigeria right now that a legal investment that will possibly match the inflation rates. What you only look at, what you only look at is how do you, how do you, which investments do you do to at least, you know, reduce the effect, the negative impact of the inflation, you understand? So, by and large, it, it still boils down to stocks that have good dividend yield, you understand? It still boils down to stocks that have good dividend yield. Yes, virtually right now, there's practically very little we can do, respect, except the government decide to tackle inflation head on. You know, like what we say, if you look at the consumer, um, uh, uh, we look at the industrial goods, what is causing it, what do they need to do on those industrial goods, and look at the agricultural goods, what is causing it, the supply chain disruption, what do they need to do? You understand that inflation will still start to be going up. And the best investor can do in the market is to look at stocks that he will never will help them to fight or get reduce the effect of the inflation to the PLS minimum. But I doubt okay. whether you can you can take a more calm investment that will match that. All right. Thank you so much, Steve Okafor, for sharing your thoughts with us on the show. Thank you. Thank you for the job. All right, we've been speaking with Steve Oka for the MD Kofana Securities. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has asked the government to address fundamental issues of friendly policies affecting the growth of the manufacturing sector. 
just as it moves to drive local content patronage. This will be our focus when we come back from this break. Stay with us. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, has tasked the government to address fundamental issues of unfriendly policies affecting the growth of the manufacturing sector. MAN made this disclosure during its opening ceremony of the Made in Nigeria Product Expo, which began yesterday. The 2023 edition of the Expo drew thousands of participants, including over 100 exhibitors, industry players, marketers, and consumers from all walks of life. Ibrand TV crew, led by business editor Frank Omalape, has been on ground since Monday and he will be joining us on the show for update. But in the meantime, we are joined virtually right now by Olushola Olowoyeye, a business analyst. Hello, uh, good to have you join us today. Good morning. Thank you very much, Perpetua, and I'm very happy to be on this call this morning. All right. Well, very quickly, we're looking at local content, and um, I, I think a lot of people are elated by this particular uh, exhibition going on by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Uh, let me ask you now, as someone who is a player in the local content, let's say the local content um, sector, if there is anything like that, uh, what would you say is the major challenge of uh, businesses in Nigeria? Okay, thank you very much for that very question. And um, when you talk about local player or local content, uh, I'm sure you know uh, Nigeria happens to be one of the countries with uh, fastest growing SMEs in terms of startup businesses and small scale businesses uh, trying to thrive as much as possible. Uh, one of the key challenges starts with funding. Uh, we also have uh, challenges in terms of infrastructure and, uh, you know, uh, with security uh, it has become uh, much more bigger issues for businesses to survive okay now that you've come you were saying no I, I i just mentioned three major key key okay. ones uh, okay. even though there are other challenges however those are the three uh, top priorities okay you said something uh, about infrastructure uh, talking about infrastructure uh, what exactly are you referring to uh, I'm sure by the time I, I try to break infrastructure down, uh, we're still going to boil down basically to provision of power. Power has been a major issue, and this is something that we believe that government intervention in this area uh, will quickly help a lot of businesses to be able to survive, most especially uh, production companies, manufacturing companies who are trying to uh, you know, do day-to-day -day, uh, production to meet uh, the needs of Nigerians on a daily basis. Okay. Now, very quickly, uh, let's look at the ease of doing business. I mean, this government prize itself as one that has done well in that area. Uh, in your own opinion, how would you uh, rate the government's um, policy in that area? Okay. In terms of rating the government policy, uh, I'll say Nigerian government in terms of policy and you know putting uh, structure in place for businesses to easily be set up. Uh, I think uh, quite a lot has been done in that. Uh, a whole lot of those processes have been automated. Uh, it's no longer the bureaucracy has been removed as much as possible. Uh, most of those areas of starting up in terms of your documentation, uh, uh, they've made it extremely very, very what, uh, easy. Uh, I would score them uh, much more than uh, a 50%, uh, an average of nothing less than 70 to 80% in that regards. All right. Well, very quickly now, uh, there are some persons, when we talk about challenges, I know to a very large extent, you've talked about challenges, you know, from the angle, of, from the perspective of the government, what the government isn't doing right. But I believe that uh, beyond the government, there are other challenges. For example, uh, why is it that Nigerians would rather prefer to, you know, patronize imported goods or let's say patronize um, some other products rather than patronize locally made products? Okay, good. Uh, if, if you delve into this very area, talking about um, how well are we patronizing our local products that are being produced, uh, apart from the challenges that uh, startup businesses and organizations generally face in Nigeria, uh, I want us to look at it from three major perspectives. Okay. Uh, it has economic implication, it has uh, individual implication, and it also has business implication. So now, 
Why are Nigerians uh, not patronizing the local product? Uh, first of all, uh, there has not been sufficient room to showcase even what we are even producing locally. There should be a platform that allows every locally product to easily be showcased for everybody to be able to know what is even going on around you. Uh, uh, we need to showcase what we are doing locally to the world. Uh, our people need to get to be able to accept even what we have. How many of them are even aware that some of these things are currently being produced even though on a small scale level? So there is need to push for more awareness uh, in order to be able to get even more Nigerians to be able to patronize the local products uh, that, are, that are available. I'm sure with uh, what government has done uh, through the CBN in the last uh, few months to a year now about making so much publicity and media about locally produced uh, rice uh, has made Nigerians to, to get, get to accept more that locally produced rice is what we have been relying on in the last five to six years uh, of this uh, administration. So uh, there is this need to showcase what is going on locally uh, so that most of these businesses will be able to, uh, to try. And if uh, Nigerians are now relying more on locally uh, produced rice and is what we are consuming, uh, I'm sure you, will have, you, you can see the impact that it has reduced the amount of our importation of foreign, foreign rice and that has helped us to be able to grow the economy and create more jobs in the in the process of doing that. So uh, the, the the government needs to intervene in this area uh, and create a platform that allows uh, every SMEs, every small scale businesses, medium size, and you know, to be able to showcase what is currently going on, so that we can gain more acceptance locally. All right. I think I'd like to come in here. When you talk, uh, when you talk about rice, we know that uh, the rice wasn't just about showcasing. We saw policies. We saw the government making moves, uh, you know, talking about the border closure and all that. And it was all geared towards achieving this, in which, of course, to a very large extent, many believe has been achieved. So uh, are we saying that we would need the government to go through the same route in dealing with, you know, other sectors or other products? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you are very, very happy in that your uh, comment. Uh, it, when we say government intervention to be able to su uh, support locally produced uh, products, it cut across all the lines of right from policy making, making sure that uh, they set the tone from the top, getting you know actively involved in promoting the local product. So when I use the word showcasing, uh, they, they need to show total commitment right from the policy they make, the actions that they, you know, they are following up with it, and ensuring that this entire value chain is such that government is in total support. And they are pushing it from the funding, from the infrastructure, uh, from even government utilizing this product you know, uh, actively. All right, thank so you. So not, not that they are telling us to go and use it and then they are using something else. Okay, well, that's okay. Uh, please, uh, like I said earlier, I'll be joined right now by our editor, that's our business desk editor, who is live at the three-day Made in Nigeria exhibition, and he will be sharing uh, some thoughts or he'll be sharing updates with us. He'll be telling us what's going on. Uh, on there what's happening right there uh, please stand by uh, mr olowo yeah we're still with you but we want to hear what's happening at the exhibition okay thank you very much all right well we're not joined by ibrand tv senior uh, business desk editor frank omalape and then of course he'll bring us up to speed with what's happening right there when we come back we'll be able to connect uh, with him stay with us don't go away <laughs> 